Good morning, students. We are discussing on railway and airport engineering. While uh, we are discussing about the railway segment, uh, where in the previous lectures we have discussed uh, one of the major component of the railway track, and with that also we have done with all those those major components, there's fastenings, fittings that are used to prepare the railway track. So now. With today's lecture, we will start discussion about the geometric design of the track. While talking about this design, uh, there are a few parameters which affect the geometry of the track and those are radiant or the grid compensation, speed of train, radius or the degree of curve, the cant or the super elevation that we provide, the horizontal and vertical curves that comes into the journey of the track or journey of the rail and widening of gauge on the curves. So these are the major factors or the parameters which affect the design or the geometric design of the track. Well, it is very important for a tracks to have the proper geometric design in order to ensure the safe and smooth running of trains at the maximum possible speed also carrying the heaviest axle load the speed and axle load of the train are very important and sometimes are also included in these parameters to be considered while arriving at the geometric design of track okay so let's discuss about some of the necessity of the geometric design well that is to ensure the safe and smooth running of trains to achieve maximum speed of the train to carry the heaviest extra loads also to ensure the least maintenance of the track to avoid the accidents and derailments due to the defect of the track and also to provide good aesthetics or to get the good aesthetics of the particular journey and the track so these are the basic necessity or we can say uh, you know the purpose to provide a proper geometric design for the track while talking about the first parameter of the geometric design and that is the radius while the term the track radian that is uh, relative to the elevation of the two rays along the track and can be expressed in the distance that is traveled horizontally for a rise of one unit okay or in other terms uh, we can say it is yeah, like angle of inclination or the percentage difference in the elevation for a given distance of the track well uh, probably this uh, gradient is of uh, two type like rising gradient or the falling gradient we can provide any of them according to the requirement or according to the geometric of that site well a rising gradient is one in which the track rises in the direction of the movement of traffic while the falling gradient is one in which the track loses the elevation in the direction of the movement of traffic. Well, this gradient is normally represented by the distance that is traveled for a particular rise or fall of one unit, while the allowable gradients may be based on the ruling gradient, which is considered as the maximum gradient over which the train can be hold with one locomotive while in some of the countries momentum gradient can also be provided which is a kind of steeper gradient but sometimes as a shorter gradient it can be applied or it can be provided this is usually when uh, there is a track gradient is connected to a level tangent track that is long enough uh, with no signal between them because that momentum of the train should not be restricted to pass that particular gradient 
and that momentum uh, will push uh, through that particular steep gradient to pass that particular passage to the for the trains. While in curved track, there will be curve resistance to push the trains through the curve. The allowable gradient may be reduced on the curves to compensate for the extra curve resistance. Okay, so sometimes this uh, compensation gradient also uh, been provided to the track that we will discuss further. Uh, but this is for the gradients. Here in this figure, you can see what is the rising gradient, what is the falling gradient. Okay, so here uh, to take this 400 meter, a rise of 1 meter is been taken and that will consider as 1 on 400 is considered as the gradient for that track. Well, talking about the objectives of providing this gradient is to provide a uniform rate of rise or fall. Also, to reach the various stations that are located at a different elevations, to follow the natural contours of the ground, also to reduce the cost of earthwork. That is the kind of excavation we can see. So these are the objectives of providing the gradient. Wow. Now, let's discuss that what are the various gradients that is being used in the Indian railways so far. So, talking about the various gradient, those are used in the Indian railway. The first, that is the ruling gradient. Well, this ruling gradient is the maximum gradient that is allowed on the track section. Okay, it determines the maximum load that can be held by a single locomotive on that particular section. Okay, so the gradient which allows the train to pass that particular stretch with a single locomotive that is ruling gradient or we can say a gradient on which the train can pass with a single locomotive is called as the ruling gradient. While it is remarkable that the steep gradient necessitate more powerful locomotives, smaller train loads, lower speed and costly haulage. Well, as a rule, the rising gradient must be followed by falling gradients so that the amount of energy which was being used in climbing okay, can be saved in descending gradients. Okay, so always for the ruling gradient, uh, after the uh, rising gradient, okay, that falling gradient should be provided. Okay. Well, uh, Indian Railway do not specify any fixed ruling gradient, which are owing to enormous variation in the topography of our country, uh, as well as the requirement of different speed and the traffic. Okay, this is not possible to specify a fixed ruling gradient, but in the Indian Railway, uh, we use such kind of ruling gradients where a single locomotive can pull the whole train okay so for the plane terrain we use one in 150 to one in uh, 250 gradient while in the hilly terrain we use one in 100 to one in 150 gradient well once the ruling gradient is specified for a section all other gradients provided in that particular section should be flatter than the ruling gradients so that's why we say this ruling gradient is the maximum gradient that can be provided on that track. So this was about the ruling gradient. Now the second that is the pusher gradient. While in hilly terrain, sometimes the gradient, those are steeper than the ruling gradient are provided to reduce the length of the track and the overall cost. It is sometimes also known as the helper gradient also. In such situations, one locomotive is not adequate to pull the whole train so that at the pusher gradient or the helper gradient, we have to use one another locomotives as a helper or 
to push that particular train past that gradient. Okay? So in the pusher gradient, one extra locomotive is required. Well, uh, talking about the Indian Railway, the Western Guards for the broad gauge track, the pusher gradient is being allowed as 1 in 37, while in the Darjeeling Railways on the narrow gauge track, the pusher gradient is being provided as 1 in 25. Then the third one that is the momentum gradient. Well, the momentum gradient is steeper than the ruling gradient and it can be overcome by a train because of the momentum that is gained while running on that particular section. So uh, let's say uh, in valleys, a falling gradient is sometimes followed by the rising gradient. In such situation, a train coming down uh, with a falling gradient acquires good speeds as well as the momentum. And that will give the additional kinetic energy to the train. And that's why it allows it to negotiate with the gradients that are steeper than the ruling gradients. While in the section with the momentum gradient, a necessary qualification is that the train should not be stopped in any case. Okay. And uh, due to this condition or the qualification, the obstacles like signals okay, cannot be provided or should not be provided at the momentum gradients. This was about the momentum gradient. And the last that we provide uh, or that we used uh, in the Indian Railway, that is the gradient at particular station yards. Well, the gradient at station yard have to be sufficiently low due to prevent the movement of standing vehicles on the track due to, uh, the com due to the combined effect of gravity and strong winds and also to uh, reduce the additional resistive force that is required to start a locomotive to the extent possibility. Well, on the Indian railways, for all the gauges, the maximum gradient permitted in the station yard that is 1 in 400 while a minimum gradient that can be provided that is 1 in 1000 okay and this 1 in 1000 gradient uh, is recommended for only and only drainage point of view so these four types of gradients that we use ruling gradient pusher or the helper gradient then uh, momentum gradient and gradient at the station yard now, as uh, earlier we discussed or uh, we have, uh, you know, a brief about grid compensation that we generally provide on the curves. So, let's uh, put some light on that topic, the grid compensation on the curve. Let's say what is this compensation, grid compensation and why we need to provide this compensation on the curve. Well, the ruling gradient is the maximum gradient that is being provided on a particular section and when the curve lies on that ruling gradient, it gives the resistance, uh, increase uh, the resistance at that particular gradient side. So, in order to avoid that resistance beyond the allowable limits, the gradients are being reduced on the curve and this type of reduction is being considered as the grid compensation. While in India, uh, we probably use uh, to provide some of the grid compensation, which is on the broad gauge track. We provide the compensation of 0.04% per degree of curve. Or the second condition that is 7 by R. Okay, That R is nothing but the radius of that curve. So we have these two conditions. Whichever uh, will be the minimum, that will be considered as the grid compensation. The first, that is 0.4% per degree of curve or else 70 by R. Second, on the meter gauge, that value is 0.03% per degree of curve and the second condition that is 52.5 per R. Whichever is the minimum will be considered as the grid compensation 
and for the narrow gauge the value is 0.02 percent or degree of the curve and 35 by r whichever is the mean so we have to remember these values 0 0.04 percent 0 0.03 percent and 0 0.02 and 0 0.02 percent for broad gauge meter gauge narrow gauge respectively well uh, let's see uh, one example well here we have to find the steepest gradient on the curve of 3 degree for the broad gauge line with a ruling gradient of 1 in 200 while for the broad gauge as a grade compensation we use 0.04 percent for degree of curve here as 3 degree is being given okay we will take uh, the kind of first condition that is 0.04 percent for degree of curve here okay. first let's say for the broad gauge this 0.04 degree that is being allowed okay so now we have 3 degree so the total compensation would be 0.12 percent why because 0.04 percent into 3 that 0.04 percent that is for a unit degree Okay. and here we have 3 degrees so we have to multiply it by 3 so the final compensation uh, according to that condition would be 0.12 percent now here also we are given with our ruling gradient that is 1 in 200 so that gradient in percentage will be 0.50 percent okay so we have the ruling gradient of 1 in 200 that is 0.50 percent and we have to compensate 0.12 percent so we have to reduce the degree or we have to reduce that grade by 0.12 percent so the actual ruling gradient would be for that particular curve that is 0.50 minus 0.12 which is 0.38 percent so as a percentage wise we can have this answer as 0.38 percent but to provide uh, it uh, as a rise and fall time okay it can also be represented as 0.38 by 100 that uh, you know 0.38 will be again uh, go to the denominator that will be 1 upon 100 by 0.38 that uh, value of 100 by 0.38 will come as a 264 so the final gradient we can say 1 in 264 both the answer is right that is 0.38 that is in person and as per the rise and fall we can say 1 in 264 gradient should be uh, the steepest gradient on that particular curve yeah so this was one of the example how we can uh, you know compensate or how we need to compensate the gradient uh, we have one more uh, example for your practice okay you can also solve this i hope student you understand this topic properly thank you so much for your kind attention i will see you in the next lecture